Hello, welcome to Spotlight on Cirrus, brought to you by WCG TV. Today is October 28th of 2021. My name is Laura Higgs. I'd like to welcome you back to Spotlight on Cirrus after our long hiatus due to COVID. Today we have with us Karen Kempe. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Um, I'd like to explain that Karen is on the chamber here, right here in Cirrus, and you're here on the presenting the uh, Hillcrest Museum. Yes. You are also the chair of the summer events that went on just this past few months. Yes. <clears throat> so you were chair of summer events for the chamber, right, as yes. a representative of the board on the Hillcrest Museum. Yes. And so you covered summer events. What did that look like this year? Well, the summer events um, was a new committee that uh, was brought on by the chamber, and it was um, meant to be a way to encourage people to come to Cirrus as well as to get residents out and hopefully getting them to stick around for a weekend in the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, the events that I oversaw mainly were Peacock Days, of which I was a coordinator, and Heritage Days. Um, those were two brand new events okay. this summer. So, okay. um, yeah, so of course COVID made things very challenging to plan. Right. Um, you said an event had to be cancelled that we, was COVID related? Yes, we had to cancel the um, the spring fling, so that first uh, event that with the with the uh, garage sales and that sort of thing. That had to be cancelled and um, even in planning Peacock Days and Heritage Days, uh, we had a Tier 1 and a Tier 2. Um, oh, and I should mention that in there as well was um, the Christmas in July which was also another subcommittee. Um, so Loretta Turner was chair and one of the organizers of the Christmas in July. And I was one of the organizers of Peacock Days along with Kayla Lejeau and then uh, Jesse Goodwill because the we were very fortunate that, well, in, in some ways that the, um, the fair was able to, uh, because they had to cancel earlier, they joined us. So we had um, uh, Jesse joining us. And then um, the Heritage Days Committee, uh, the chair of that was Eleanor Thompson. And, um, and that was kind of the, the summer events okay. that were, were planned. And again, of course, Scarecrow Days, which was an annual event that, that is, uh, was able to run. Mm -hmm. But um, those three events were, were planned with a, a Tier 1 and a Tier 2. Um, was that due to restrictions? Yes. 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 Okay. So it was totally about restrictions. Right. So if things were completely open, what would that look like? And if there were restrictions, what, were, what would be okay. able to be accomplished? So that was a, a lot of extra planning due to, I mean, due to yeah. COVID restrictions, of course, but a yeah. lot of extra planning on those committees, for sure. Yeah, it really was. Um, we, we did have to, you know, we were really addressing the concerns because I know that uh, at that point in time, you know, there was there were community members that were very concerned that somehow we were going to be doing these events, even though there was, you know, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. But, but we we just really needed to find a way to reassure the community that we weren't going to be doing anything that we couldn't do. Obviously, mm -hmm. we were we were definitely bound by what the restrictions were. So, so it was very important for us to have a tier one and a tier two because in our minds, you know, it would be better to have a plan and not be able to execute it versus finding out, you know, two weeks before a date right. that we could have gone ahead and done something. So, right. um, so um, with regards to the Christmas in July, um, they were able to go ahead and do the campsite um, decoration con competition. And, uh, and I think there were some, you know, sales, Christmas in July sales mm -hmm. in, the, in the community, yes, in the yes, stores. Um, and then when we got to Peacock Days, we were getting the rumblings of things being able to open up. And uh, we had, um, again, as I said, that the fair board join us. So we were up, uh, able to create a really great event that really brought a lot of people to the community as well as bringing the residents out. It was really the first opportunity people had to be out and about. Yes, in a long time. In a long a time. very long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was, a, you know, our, the feedback has been that it was very successful. Good. And, um, and uh, something that we will plan to do next year as good. well. Um, you have a good template now. Yes, and the fair will move back to its original time in July, and we'll just move Peacock Days along with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Heritage Days was something brand new. We wanted to 
honor the anniversary of the Métis in Manitoba. It was the 150th anniversary, as well as um, the history of Surus and the, um, uh, and I think it was the 140th anniversary of Surus as well. So, um, so the events that were planned around that had to do with, with that theme, mm -hmm. really. So um, uh, we had the Métis concerts and um, Gossip in the Graveyard and uh, a little bit of work was done in terms of recognizing historical places in Surus, the buildings that no longer are there. Mm -hmm. so, so that was very interesting. So yeah, 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 a lot of fun putting those good. together. Good, good. It was a good summer. I know I attended uh, Gossip in the Graveyard, mm -hmm. which was very well done. All you folks who were in it did such a great mm -hmm. job. It was wonderful. Yeah. And the history that's there, the history of the of the buildings in town and the people and the families. Yeah, uh, there are several families that are still in totally intertwined into our community that that is um, really interesting information for us to have. And I've yeah. only been in Surus a little over 20 years. Right. So even being new to the community, I'm finding some of these things out and, mm -hmm. and finding all the connections. Well, and I find that Surus is uh, unique in that there is a great pride in the history of Surus. And um, it actually is a very, it, it does hold an important place in history in this area. So even, even for myself this year that I learned that it was, um, for the Métis, it is a very important location that this is actually one of the main locations of the pemmican trade. Mm. And uh, that the Métis flag was actually created somewhere between here and Brandon. So, and definitely traveled from Surus to Brandon by, um, yeah, I'm not sure how it got there, but yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's one wow. of those, that, you know, that's something that I learned this yeah. year. And um, just in the time that I've lived here, again, like just the the um, the history, yeah. how important it is to so many people here. That yeah, and it's very unique. I yeah. find. Well, the Heritage Days was a, a very a good addition to the summer events, mm -hmm. uh, as to open up that history to those of us who are yeah. new and to help those who have been around a long time yeah. to remember their history. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for yeah, sure. Absolutely. For sure. So the chamber will carry on next year, with like I said, the template and plan these events with hopefully a lot less restrictions. Right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. How it looks next year might be a little bit different. Um, we're certainly still in the planning stages mm -hmm. of that. Um, as I said, uh, Peacock Days will follow the fair because we did get a lot of feedback that that was something. Went so, hand in hand. In yeah, there. and so that worked out really well together. It was just an opportunity to um, to coordinate, you know, uh, more more town things with the with the fair. So so it just yeah, it just brought a, made everything really quite nice and cohesive. You know, just Good. you know, so that um, is something for sure that will happen. And um, what Heritage Days looks like, where you know, and, and any of those other events is still very much in, in development the stage. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. That's really good. Now, because you're on the chamber, you're there because you are now the president of the Hillcrest Museum, correct? Yes. So yeah. if we can sort of switch uh, topics sure. <laughs> here and talk about the museum, yeah. mm -hmm. um, how long have you been on on the board of the museum? I've been on the board of the museum now for about two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and president for. About six months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Fairly it was one of the position. things that uh, when my uh, partner and I first arrived, we um, we were invited to play at the Christmas Gala um, and and do the music for the Christmas Gala, which is an annual event that the museum holds as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't hold it last year because of COVID, and we're going to do something a little different this year, which is we're just going to have. Um, an open, uh, we're, we're kind of looking at trying to do a Christmas open house and just have the main floor of the museum decorated and have hot chocolate and cookies and just, mm -hmm. just really as a thank you to the community for supporting us this year. And, uh, but anyway, so we, it, uh, we were doing the music and, um, and I, I, I've been to the museum uh, a number of times and have always just loved it and walking back in and just really feeling this, uh, all this positive energy. And I just walked up to one of the board members and said, I want to be on the board, so mm -hmm. I was invited to Welcome, join the board. Of and um, how many I, people are on the board now? Right now, we're sitting at eleven members, mm -hmm. and there are is room for more. Where I um, we are looking at um, adding maybe three more members to the board, um, three or four. But we're definitely open for volunteers because um, we do so for people who 
you know, can't commit to being on, on a board um, if they wanted to step up and be available for an event or for, you know, any tasks that need to be done. Kind of like a friend of the organization mm -hmm. so yeah. that they don't have to attend regular meetings or... No, they, they would just be called and... If still come in and help. volunteer, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there are 11 members at this point in time. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, there's uh, not enough. Pe there's never seems to never be enough people on a, on a board. Yeah. There's always lots and lots to do. But the board doesn't actually run the uh, facility. I, I mean, they don't staff it. You staff it with um, usually students. Is that correct? At this point in time, yes, it's staffed with students. Um, in the past, there were usually it was a student. Um, and board member combo, mm -hmm. so that there would usually be a board member there, um, maybe doing admissions while students did the tours, mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, this, the last few years, and definitely while I've been on the board, it's been staffed um, with s summer students, and uh, um, and we're kind of again looking at that again, and maybe looking at ways that we maybe we bring in board members. To, so that we can extend the hours at the museum in the summer and maybe a little late, a bit later into the season. Oh, okay. As well, good. So, that's yeah. really good. And you also hire somebody to do the yard work as well. Is well, that that's part, part of, your... of the summer students? Summer students. Yeah, we, okay. Last year we hired. Well, this this past year we had three three summer students, and the year previous there were four. Mm -hmm. So so light yard work is is part of their duties if they have time. But okay. definitely it's a volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, position we do have uh, a yard committee. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. So now uh, we're on the fast track. I know they've done some fundraising in the past for mm -hmm. the new window. Yeah. The, the new stained glass window that's in the living room. Yeah. Right. And lately, the the roof has been fixed. Is that correct? Yes. We had a major fundraising campaign that started in about February. Um, the roof was in major need of of repair. Um, and as the museum has been suffering water damage probably for the last four years. And there's been sort of stopgap measures put in place to try to, you know, kind of keep that at bay. But we got to a point this year that it, it really, just, need to be it done. really needed mm -hmm. to be done um, before serious damage was done. So um, that campaign started, um, a public appeal started in, in February, and uh, we set a target goal which we've now met um, uh, for the water damage mm -hmm. and the roof replacement. The roof replacement, which we called phase one, has been completed. And so there's a brand new roof on the, on the museum. And um, then now we're into phase two, which is repairing all the water damage that, was, that had resulted from, from the previous um, uh, exposure to water. So we've got brick and mortar repairs that we need to do interior repairs in the butterfly room and the adjoining nursery room, actually that whole south wall, mm -hmm. top and bottom, need some attention, care and attention because of the water damage. Sure. And um, yeah, some flooring needs to be, you know, replaced and, and that sort of thing. So um, we don't know what that's all going to now, you know, I mean, that, so that's our next step. With, with with our with our restoration and as of late it's been mostly donations that have helped that um, not we, necessarily fundraising events because of covid yeah right? yeah we've been, it's been a lot of donations <coughs> we do have some raffles and and silent auctions and okay. i should have brought my peacock painting mm -hmm. we had a, a um a student uh not a student i'm sorry uh we had a, a member of the community um paint a beautiful pe uh, peacock and it's on our it's on our Facebook page, um, and we have a an auction going on right now, just a silent bid auction. Okay. So, I think it's right now at one hundred and twenty five dollars. Okay. And um, so that's ongoing. And we've had um, another member of the community donate four oil paintings of historic of historic buildings in Zurich. So those will be um, um, uh, up for. Uh, I think we're doing a silent auction for those. Like, and um, they'll be at the Hobbycraft sale, um, which is in November. November, yes. As will the painting. And uh, uh, Bison Ritchie has also donated um, a Bison meat pack for us okay. to raffle off. So, nice. So we're going to have some fundraising, like raffles and things like that. Oh, and we do have an online 50-50 okay. that that's, um, that's going on right now. So um, the hobby craft is so those are little fundraising um, adventures that we have, and hobby craft is also something that supports 
the museum. That's a fundraiser for the museum as well. And um, yeah, and that, that's kind of our events. We did get receive a grant. It's a matching grant from the province of Manitoba, which is um, we need to spend <laughs> at that, the same mm -hmm. amount of money. So we need to spend $82,000 <coughs> in order to get half of that back. Ah. So it's, it's, if we don't spend that much money, then we may not get, we just get half of whatever right. we spent. So, right. yeah, so we do have some support from funding, uh, like from the province. Sure. And, um, but the rest has been community donations sure. and uh, we've been overwhelmed at the support yeah. from the community and even former residents of Suras have been sending donations in um, and we've been getting lovely cards uh, to go along with that, so, so yeah, it's, it's been a it's been a wonderful experience actually okay. to see how important the museum is to the community. Well, that's a, a very good idea to have the online uh, events, online fundraiser going on, mm -hmm. so that there still is no contact. I mean, we follow all the COVID yeah. rules, right? And now you said your Christmas event, as you mentioned earlier, about this year's Christmas event is going to be more thank you to the community than mm -hmm. an actual yeah. huge fundraiser. Yeah. Gonna, okay. Yeah. It okay. will just it's. Um, just very, you know, um, we're, we're looking at decorating the, the inside of the museum and having some hot chocolate and cookies yeah. and, and, you know, and just uh, letting people enjoy uh, and a bit of Christmas yeah. with us. So yeah. that's what we're planning on. Um, and, and those of us who come yeah. at regular uh, will see new things. There's always, like, things are always changing in the museum and there's often things donated to the museum. You mm -hmm. guys incorporate them into the, the whole... Yeah. Um, yeah. Display there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Some of the interesting things that were there, the but butterfly collection, mm -hmm. the scrapbooks that were upstairs as well, so yes. are very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. 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 Lots of things for people to see. So much to see and, and read there mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. you could go back a couple times every summer and still not catch up with everything. That's very true. Yeah. 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 And then, okay. of course, and went during regular season, the Egg Museum is also open for uh, people to wander through as well. Right, just in the back mm -hmm. yard there, basically. Yeah. 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 And there's a great view from that uh, from that backyard out onto the river to yes. see the bridges and stuff. Yeah. It's actually a beautiful view Yeah. yeah as well. Well, Karen, I think that's wonderful that you came in to share with us uh, things you. about the your part on the chamber mm -hmm. and your part as president of the uh, Hillcrest Museum. We really appreciate your time and we're so glad that you have joined our community. Oh, well, you seem you. like a very busy person, a very <laughs> enthusiastic, and we very much appreciate that. Thank, thank you for you. coming in. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Spotlight on Service. Have a great day.